Welcome back for Commodities Market Update. Now we have uh, Bolale Agbaje, Senior Analyst at FDC, join us right here in the studio. Uh, great to have you. Thank Good you morning. Me. Yeah, so the number now is 2222. Two, two, two. Two. <laughs> Quite an interesting uh, number, but no surprises. Yes, no surprises. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's a cause for concern because as much as... Um, it's not as it's what we expected, but inflation is still rising. Prices are still sticky. And um, it seems like the hikes in interest rates they've done so far, the policy rates they've done so far, has had little impact. So we can say on, the, this inflation has defied yes, interest seems, rate hikes. Yes, it seems like it. Um, and, you know, one thing I've heard is um, the IMF actually mentioned that usually policy rates, after about three to four years, the impact on um, inflation. If you're still, if you're still focusing on that particular rate of inflation that keep that, that keeps going up, it has it definitely now has minimal impact on it. So um, it would be nice for the central bank to look for other supportive measures to you know help to bring down this particular inflation rate. It's not necessarily great. And um, what we had seen in the past month was the fact that you know food prices was the ma major contributor to this. Although you still have those structural issues that keep lingering with transportation and you know fall prices all of that still you know having its impact on um, prices generally in the economy uh, we're seeing you know other climbs you know inflation is either you know slowing or um, having some kind of but deceleration still, still very but still high. high yes you know but at least we're seeing some kind of you yes, know, so obviously, you know, when it comes to our economy, comparing it to, you know, what's happening in the West, we're still very far behind in terms of our structures. And um, so it would definitely be, be worse for us in this country, just because it's not just about, you know, the pandemic or the war affecting, you know, prices, and which obviously led to, you know, the wage spiral effect in other countries. Right here, unemployment levels are at record highs. You know, you're, you're having some deficiencies in major industries that have that have contributed to or made the prices linger and still you know going up and one important thing as well is the expectations right now everyone in the economy expects that prices would remain high just because you're seeing major costs that are contributing to uh, major um, aspects of businesses remaining high as well so those expectations also feed into the final um, prices that we see in the market sorry right, uh, break down the um, data for us that we see uh, core inflation is high. Highest yes. level since May 2004, higher than most estimates. Um, lo looking at the, the data overall, mm -hmm. are there any positives? Um, so, well, core inflation increased from 19.86% to 20.14. Food inflation also increased from 24.45 to 24.61%. Um, so from there, it's clear that, you know, food inflation is the one, the major driver. But one important aspect to look at is the month on month. So the month on month probably tells you, you know, whether the hike in price was significant or not. So month on month actually increased um, to about 1.91%, which is a cause for concern. But at the end of the day, when we look at what the, the activities in the month of April, we had seen two celebrations that don't necessarily happen within the same month happening. So you, you've had that extra, you know, buzz with prices. And um, so going forward, it means that right now, obviously, we're entering the planting season. So we do expect that prices would increase as normal in previous years. But um, we do hope that it, the, the rate at which it increases, so following the month-on-month -month, um, increases, shouldn't be as much as um, what we had seen so far. Because when I go into the stores, it feels higher than 22.22. And I know you go into the stores yourself. You go to the market. Well, we, we do. feel really as high. As economists, we, we definitely have to so, like focus on the data that you know, we're seeing at the moment because they have, there are ways that you know, the inflation numbers are being calculated. Um, but um, definitely you would feel that because it's, it's, it's directly what's going into your mouth. So, exactly. And you're, fe you're, you're feeling it based on your, uh, dependent on the salary you earn every month. So it will bite hard, definitely. But um, we've all said this, this year is going to be a tough year for Nigerians. Um, we've seen so many Already unexpected... Already proving to be tough. It's pretty, and it's, it's most likely going to remain tough, most likely to the end of the year. Um, and we, what we do hope is that as this new administration comes in in 
two weeks, um, they get right into business and focus on targeting those areas that are making the economy um, as weak as we see it at this point. And, and looking at you know, all of this um, data, how much can the average consumer still take you know, at this time and the, the average worker you know, out there? Because at the end of the day, your, uh, your salary is not doing very much. Yeah, so, well, know, with food prices, there. you know, we see the up and down movement. So it, majorly in Q2, you see the planting season where food, food prices or food supply actually reduces. But going into Q3, when the harvest season begins again, you see those changes. So it's not to say that this particular trend with, you know, very, very high food prices is going to, and I, I, I'm, I'm focusing more on food prices because, you know, that's the, the, the basic necessity of, you know, every human being. That takes and a chunk of it every... It takes a chunk of, <laughs> of, of earnings. Of, of, yeah, of earnings. And so by the time you enter, you know, Q3, we do expect that, you know, it will be, it will be tapered down slightly. And, um, well, we don't we don't we, we it would be nice to also watch and see what the administration does as well because uh, it would be nice for them to get into it and kick off things although we do have the the, the subsidy issue lingering as well so let's see it's it's it's, it's just to wait and see and yeah. see game yes and, and the dangote refinery you know commissioning that's yeah. also next week yes i wonder how that's even going to play into the inflation story mm -hmm. when they start production um so it's, let's give it time and see what the, the prices would come out to be and see how that, you know, how the, the market actually responds to this as well. Um, one thing we do know is that the cost of production generally, not just Dangote refinery, generally for any, you know, industry is very high at the moment and that would be fed into the prices of whatever their product, their final product is. So um, it would just be nice to see what Dangote does in terms of managing, you know, the costs and creating a situation where the, the final product that we get is better than what we're, you know, importing at the moment. That would be, that'll be quite um, great for sure. But now, um, I want you to look into your crystal ball. It's May. What are you expecting? We've had 22.22 for April. What are you seeing in May? So, obviously, like I mentioned, in May, we're still in the heart of the planting season. So, it's most likely that inflation numbers will definitely, you know, inch up. We don't know. It, 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 it might not be as much as what we've seen now, but um, it will definitely be going up because that's just what the fundamentals are saying. And uh, the last uh, MPC meeting, meeting for this the, uh, yes. administration, yes, next week. that's next week. What are you expecting? Uh, we definitely do expect a hike, another hike. Currently, policy rate is about 18%. Um, so even, even if we're trying to be um, conservative and there's no hike, definitely maintaining status quo. So it's between one of the two, but we're leaning more towards the hike because the last time inflation numbers were around this number was in 2005. And at that point, policy rate was 13%. And that was just because we had the debt forgiveness and the completeness at that time. But right now, things are very different. So it's, it, I, I'm sure the central bank... Um, the committee wouldn't sit back and watch, you know, inflation go out of um, out, out of the ranges that they had, you know, predicted. And also the fact that, you know, in other countries in the West, inflation numbers are actually coming down now, and the impact of the hikes in interest rates is feeding into the market. But we're yet to see that within Nigeria. So as much as the hike is expected. It would be nice to see where where, where, where those, why those channels are not feeding into um, the domestic economy. And it's quite interesting, you know, in the U.S., we've seen the impact of the hikes, not yes. just on inflation. Where they even but on ignored, their, yeah, you know, the banking the, crisis the banking as well. Crisis. Because you can see how, the priority that they have when it, terms, when it comes to inflation numbers. Uh, and it's quite interesting. Uh, what, what can we say for sure the interest rate hikes right here in Nigeria is really impacting well, the banks, for one, you know, would feel the impact immediately. But um, I think there's probably a disconnect somewhere where the, <clears throat> the interest rates, it's not necessarily translating into um, or, or feeding into um, the inflation numbers. Because um, ordinarily, when you have those hikes in uh, interest rate savings, you should have more savings within the banks. But that's not the case at the moment. Nobody is saving. I, I'll be surprised to see, you know, Niger M most Nigerians, in fact, the educated 
Nigerians are more or less saving abroad. Um, you don't have, you know, those saving rates in within. And I guess it's because the saving rates are not as attractive as they're supposed to be. So there's quite a disconnect there. And um, so I, I'm sure those are one of the reasons why you're not seeing that translation. But the central bank probably knows, they know where the faults are. And I'm sure they're working as hard to make sure that they, they, they solve that problem. As soon uh, as with the cash crunch in the first quarter yes. of 2023, it'd be interesting to see how deposits you know, growing at this yes, time. Yes, because yes. Because obviously Nigerians will have a... <laughs> quite a <laughs> but let's look at oil, um, oil markets now. We see prices are up today. Yes. We've had the same trend. You know, it's up today, it's down tomorrow. Same uh, um, issue we're seeing in that, in that space mm -hmm. at the time. Yes, yeah, so right now, um, the U.S. mentioned that they're trying to increase their strat tra tra strategic reserve um, by about 3 million barrels. So that already signaled um, a, a supply concern in the market. So that's why we're seeing that uptake at the moment. But going forward, the supply issue will definitely follow because towards the middle... Q3, Q4, you see a lot of piling up of some of those resources. And when that happens, that translates into higher prices as well. And also the fact that, you know, we're seeing a, a depreciation of the dollar, that also translated into higher prices for oil. So it's still the, the normal fundamentals that are driving prices up and down, but the supply concerns still weigh in on prices. And um, we do expect that prices will be ranging from... 75 to about $80 per barrel. Going, going forward. forward, yes. And uh, we, don't, we don't have a 50 range. No, <laughs> I think that's been or extremely lower pessimistic. <laughs> no lower 60. Except with something um, significant happens, um, maybe to do with the big... Uh, uh, the, the, the big uh, producers, Russia, Saudi Arabia. So that's what can really drive prices lower. But I, at this point, I don't see that happening in the near term. All right. How are the domestic uh, markets looking, you know, with this inflation data of 22.22? Yeah, so dom the domestic market is... is inching upwards as we're entering the planting season. In the month of April, we had actually seen tomatoes, the price of tomatoes go up as high as 70,000 um, naira per bag. Right now it's currently at about 40,000. Um, so prices are slightly going up and they, we do expect them to go slightly higher within the next few, um, I think the next two to three months while we have the planting season, majorly tubers as well. And that was cited in the NBC, NBS report. Um, so, that's the range for prices that we're seeing at the moment. It would be interesting to see price stability again sometime because it's uh, the conversation from 2022 into 2023, rising prices, like rising prices. Like I mentioned, prices. price stickiness is a major issue here. Um, no one really expects that prices will go down anytime soon. So that, that expectation is really driving prices Quite know, incredible. higher. Quite incredible. Incredible times. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Bolalia Agbaje, Fino and this financial derivatives company. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right.